She's only 16, but she has slept with 32 guys and is from house to house. The houses of those guys, from one house to the other. And she tells me, if you don't help me, I will continue. What would you do? You don't want to miss this. So for those who have been following the 10 reasons why I talk about sex, you realize that when I reach the number 9 or 10 there, the Lord speaks to me and says, seriously, why 10? So he said, a thousand reasons to talk about sex. So he begins reminding me of the testimonies and the, the effectiveness of speaking about the same. Because anytime I went and spoke about the same, he confirmed this word. Anything that you speak about, the Lord is always ready to confirm with his word. For instance, if you are a minister of the gospel and you speak about healing, then expect that God will heal the people. If you talk about, uh, for instance, miracles, you know that at the end of the sermon, at the end of the message, uh, God is ready to impart the uh, same to your hearers. Whatever it is that you speak about, God is always ready to confirm your message. The Bible says that he fulfilleth the counsel of his messengers and confirms the word of his servant. That is why we speak. And our words are not are just empty words. You speak life. The words that I speak, they are spirit and life. Why? Because it is in union with Christ. Always remember this bit that I keep repeating here. Is no longer I that speaks, is no longer I that lives, is no longer I that fights, is no longer I that preaches. This is the rest of Galatians 2.20. There's a rest you need to reach in the Lord where you know that the results are not based on your eloquence or they are not bound to your experience, exposure or expertise. It's not about how you can convince or convict or persuade people per se, but it's about what the Lord with His Holy Spirit is able to get and impart into the hearts of men and women. So the reason why I'm talking about sex today is because of a testimony that I have, a story to impart value. So one day I am in Nairobi, I am with the youths and they have called me to actually talk about sex because what happens is that referrals happen when you talk in point A and they like what you say, they invite you at point B. So this was part of a referral church where I go and uh, when the session is over, one of the girls comes to me and she's only 16 and she asked if she could open up to me and uh, of course I already know that she's ready to open up because whenever I go to speak to the young people or any congregation for that matter I should tell them if you plant seeds of honesty you will reap seeds of honesty God cannot be mocked whatever a man our souls that say me shall reap so because I plant seeds of honesty and openness I reap a lot of it after each and every meeting everywhere I go I find people coming up and opening their hearts up why because I open up so if you also open up people will open up to you what people don't want is they don't want you speaking down on them as if you are on an ivory tower so I just become like Jesus and I was Jesus in Hebrews chapter 2 uh, from 14 to 18 it says something to do with uh, Jesus being made like us fashioned in the flesh and blood like all of us so that he could be a faithful high priest so that he could help those who are being tempted because he was tempted in all things as we are yet without sin so one who has passed through any form of temptation as we do when we speak or we deal with such a person we feel that this person understands so i believe that's why this girl felt that this guy will understand what i'm going through so she opens up and tells me that uh, 
I'm only 16 years, I'm in Form 1, but I've slept with over 32 guys. So uh, she just opens up why it happens that she was left by the mother who went abroad into the diaspora and the mother doesn't communicate and the grandmother doesn't uh, care anymore about her. So how do you tend for yourself? So she opens up that she's tried to uh, put up with girls' friends and they are not willing to keep her. So the people are only willing to, so she says that the people are willing to keep me in their houses or cribs or rooms are uh, uh, boys but after one or two weeks after staying with any of the boys or the men they always demand that I open my legs and because I don't have anywhere to go I usually do it but I've realized with tears in my heart and I've broken out that anytime I open my legs to any of the boys they usually I lose interest in me and no one wants me around them anymore of course that story was very touching and uh, it's amazing that uh, women or girls are not ready to uh, keep other girls especially if they don't have a job while well, the situation can be more serious than that and that you see even some girls going to the streets well uh, that's why sometimes also it's good to open up to uh, people and friends and I wondered why she could not open up in the fellowship where I found her anyways because they will not talk about such things as sexuality and how uh, it affects you so because of the way people talk about sexuality it becomes very hard to open up because in the church when you open up your wrongdoings or your failures uh, people will reject you so she was fearing of being rejected long story short I just called a certain lady who is a good friend and she arranged on where to have the girl stay was a moral lesson of the story is that there are so many people that are going through stuff and crazy stuff like that but if they don't have someone to speak to they don't know that you can open up they don't know you can be able to help and you can, even if you don't offer help yourself, you can at least make a call. So it is this network of friendship, this idea of helping out, the ability to share so that you can be able to draw someone out who is dying alone, is what I'm trying to pass on to you. Are you able to share in such a way that someone who is hiding out in the congregation can come up to you and open their hearts to you? and thereby you offer help. So that's how God confirms as well that whatever you spoke was powerful, whatever you spoke can change a life, whatever you spoke is able to keep someone from falling, someone from the jaws of temptation, or from the jaws of a certain death, or from the jaws of hell. So your word can bring life, your word can bring comfort, your word can be the word of season in the needed time but beyond being sexualized there are those who are mistreated by their fathers or mothers and they are out there they are suffering they need our help they need our word and we need to speak to them so therefore go out and speak to someone go out and look for someone you can help listen more keenly open more deeply about this because there are so many people who need some help, some God bless you as you find a reason to speak about sex.